uh welcome back to the course uh so far so good uh like also like to congratulate you for reaching this far uh, within the course so far just to recap what we've been able to do uh, we've looked at what insurance is all about the types of insurance the different types of vehicles we've also been able uh to look at the general pricing of how uh, purchasing insurance works so in this uh, class i will look at practical aspects when purchasing a private vehicle comprehensive insurance so if you can recall from our previous class uh, we say that when purchasing comprehensive insurance you have to pay as a percentage of the value of your car Gen general practice uh, for pricing this from both motor and commercial vehicle insurance it's good to note that the percentage is simply multiplied by the value of your car so let's say your car is valued at 1 million and the insurance company says that they're charging 5% of that value so you simply multiply 5 by the 1 million get 50,000 and that's the amount which you're supposed to pay but it's not the exact amount because after that you need to add in uh, what are referred to as levies so these are levies they're charged uh, these are government charges which are supposed to be paid now by the insurance company to the relevant uh, bodies so the levies there are two types of levies uh, first is referred to as the policyholder uh, compensation compensation fund levy so this is a specified amount contributed by the insurance company to the policyholder compensation fund and this fund accumulates this money and uses it in the event that an insurance company collapses and ha doesn't have to be the same insurance company which you've paid to but generally all the insurance companies have to pay this amount and in the event that an insurance company collapses this amount should be used to compensate uh, the policyholders who are the people who've actually purchased insurance from the insurance company then there's something referred to as the training levy this is also charged by all insurance companies and it's used now to enhance the training of insurance within the country and uh, support uh, the sensitization and related activities. These are government charges and not activities actually being done by the insurance company. And when purchasing a new insurance cover, you also have to have an additional charge of uh, 40 Kenya shillings. And this is referred to as the stamp duty uh, charge. So with that being said, now you have an overview of how the pricing is done. So first you need to get the basic insurance. So if they've told you it's a percentage, you need to calculate the percentage. Once you get this amount, then from that amount, get the levy charge. So let's say from our previous example, we had a vehicle valued at 1 million. Uh, the rate which the insurance company was charging was 5%. So we multiplied the 5% times the 1 million. We had 50,000. Now for this 50,000, we need to get the levies. So the levies, are a total of 0.45 percent these are fixed figure for all types of insurance it's good to note that this uh, levy charge covers for both all classes of general insurance and life insurance so once you calculate the 0.45 uh, percent of 50,000 then the amount which you get there add 40 shillings and get the total amount and uh, on your end, you can be able to do this calculation and uh, share your answer in the comment below uh, to verify that you've truly understand or understood uh, how to calculate the premium amount. So now let's go back uh, to our private comprehensive uh, vehicle insurance. So if you just want the basic vehicle insurance, that's how you'll calculate it. But there are also additional benefits which can be purchased uh, when getting the private vehicle uh, comprehensive insurance. So one of these key benefits uh, is referred to as excess protector. So this actually the most popular uh, additional benefit uh, which people pay for. So for excess protector, this means that in the event that your vehicle is involved uh, in an accident, under normal circumstances, you as the vehicle owner has to pay 
a specified amount in the event that you are to blame. Even if you have comprehensive insurance and you've been involved in an accident, the insurance company doesn't pay the whole amount. So that's why they have this thing called the excess. So for excess, is it even um, computed as a percentage and has a set uh, minimum. So the insurance company can tell you we have an excess of 2.5% and this may vary uh, depending on the insurance company and a minimum of 20,000. So what this means is if we go back to an example where the vehicle value was 1 million. So in the event that we have an accident, irrespective of the cost of repair, we have to contribute as the vehicle owner to the repair 2.5%. And when you do the 2.5%, you find that it's 25,000. So you have to pay 25,000 and the insurance company will pay the balance. Let's say the cost of repair was 300,000. The insurance company will pay 275 and you'll pay 25,000 towards the repair of the vehicle. So in the event that your vehicle value, let's say, was 600,000, if you do 2.5% uh, of that, you'll find it's below the 20,000, which was set by the insurance company. So in this case, you'll pay the minimum. 20,000, insurance company will pay the rest. So a lot of people find this as a great inconvenience. So for you to avoid this, you insure against excess. So this was referred to as the excess uh, cover, or the excess benefit. And this is also calculated as a percentage of the value of your car, and it's usually a small amount. So for the event that you are purchasing the comprehensive insurance, our initial rate was given at uh, 5%. So they can tell us, for you to get an excess uh, protector or an excess cover, you need to add an additional 0.5%. 25% or 0.3%, 0.5%, now depending on uh, the insurance company's terms and conditions. So once we add this, now our new rate uh, changes. And also, it's good to note before adding it, because some insurance companies can tell you our excess is, let's say, 0.25%. So now you'll simply go in, in and add the 5% plus the 2.5, uh, multiply it, and get our new amount. But it's good to calculate it separately because in most scenarios, the insurance companies also have a minimum premium for their additional benefits. So in the event that we want an uh, excess protector, we need to look at the terms of the insurance company. So the insurance company tells us, for example, it's 2.5%, but a minimum of 3,000 or a minimum of 5,000. So in the event that our vehicle value was 1 million, if we calculate 0.25% uh, of the 1 million, you'll find out that it's 2,500. So this is lower than the minimum specified by the insurance company. So in this case, if their minimum was 3,000, instead of paying the 2,500 to insure against excess, we'll have to pay an extra 3,000 over and above our previous insurance. Then the levies and the stamp duty still apply. So once we get uh, the amount, let's say it's 3,000, we need to add it back to a previous basic premium, which was 50,000 earlier. Now we have 53,000, and for us to calculate the levies, now they become 0.45% of the 53,000. And then finally we add the stamp duty, which is constant, 40,000. And something important to note, the stamp duty is only paid once, when getting the cover. So on renewal, we still pay for the levies, but we won't pay uh, for the stamp duty. So with that, you have a clear understanding of the excess benefit or the excess protector. Then a common additional benefit purchased uh, for the private vehicles is political violence and terrorism extension. So for this, it protects against losses uh, to your vehicle caused by political violence or terrorism. So it's also key to note, earlier I mentioned there's a policy document. So in the policy document, there are specified exclusions. And by exclusions, I mean these are things not covered by insurance. So political violence and terrorism is one of the common things not covered. So you have to pay an extra amount for you to get uh, this benefit. The workings are done similar to the workings of the excess protector. It's also a percentage of the value of your vehicle.
but with a set minimum. So the insurance company can come in again and say, for you to get uh, political violence and terrorism extension for your private vehicle, you need to pay 0.25% or a minimum of 3,000. The working is still the same. You need to calculate it separately. If it's lower than the 3,000, put in the 3,000. If it's higher than the 3,000, put in the amount which you've gotten. So let's go back to a previous example. A vehicle value is still 1 million. Excess protector is 0.25%, minimum of 3,000. Once we calculate it, we find that 0.25% of 1 million is 2,500. So this is obviously lower. Now the 3,000 kicks in. So if we want that benefit, we have to pay an extra 3,000. So if we, if we chose excess protector, our premium was earlier was 53,000. Now we need to add an extra 3,000. Now it's 56,000. To get the levies, we calculate the levies as a percentage of the 56,000, then add the stamp duty. So those are the two most common extensions. There's also another extension uh, referred to as loss of use. So for the loss of use, this is a compensation for the, for the period when your vehicle is at the garage while it's being repaired as a result of an accident, the insurance company is able to give you a courtesy car. So for the courtesy car, this is a car which can be able to use uh, for the specified number of days. When your vehicle is in the garage being repaired as a result of an accident, which the insurance company is catering for. So you use the vehicle for the specified set days. So under most circumstances, it's given 10 days. After the 10 days, you have to give back the car and wait for your car to be completed and pick back your car again. So for this, it's mainly charged a fixed amount. And if you want extra days, you pay higher, now depending on the extra number of days, uh, which you might prefer to have the courtesy car to be continue using in the, uh, for the period when your vehicle is uh, being uh, repaired. Uh, so with that, uh, we've looked at the key main uh, benefits or additional benefits uh, which are purchased while getting your comprehensive private insurance. So the first one was excess protector. Then we had political violence and terrorism. Then finally, uh, we had the courtesy car. So some companies also have partnership with other third parties. So they can give you something such as AA uh, road rescue, Informa uh, road rescue. So these are also paid in addition to your premium. And the insurance company then liases uh, with these other providers uh, to be able uh, to offer you the, the additional benefits, such as in the event that your vehicle uh, is damaged on the roads, uh, these uh, third party providers are, can be able to come in and offer you help, which in normal circumstances, in the event that your vehicle has a mechanical issue, that's not insurable. But once you get this extra uh, benefits from other companies, through your insurance company, you're able to enjoy uh, those additional benefits. So with that being said now, uh, you have a clear understanding of comprehensive uh, private vehicle insurance, how to calculate uh, the premiums and uh, the extra benefits uh, which you can be able to get while getting your private uh, vehicle insurance. So in the later uh, courses, we'll be able to look at practical examples from actual insurance companies uh, within the Kenyan market and try and get uh, the different rates and do the actual calculations. Uh, with that being said now, uh, we can jump in and uh, look at the uh, comprehensive commercial vehicle insurance in our next class.